meeting to order as the, I guess, the interim chair of the Committee on Public Works and Utilities. And for the record, what's, what's going on is that uh, with the resignation of Council Jesse Adams, who chaired this committee, we are now a committee of three. And I was vice chair, so now I'm stepping in as interim chair. And as I understand it, uh, the council president will await a full nine member council again before perhaps rethinking the composition of committees. So right, we have to, we're going to have to rearrange the deck furniture <laughs> when, when we have a full complement of uh, councils. But until that time, we're it. Until that time, you are filling, ably filling the interim position. So. And it is your committee to make do. Could be December, or July. <laughs> it, could it, could yes. be. it could be. It could be. It could be. So, so, so goodness, not I've got until December to play around with this new toy. Yeah. Um, I don't see any members of the public here, so I assume we have the public comment. Um, but I, I guess we should do a, a call of the, the roll. Mm -hmm. Councillor Bidwell? Here. Councillor Dwight? Here. Councillor Murphy? Here. We and have one member of the public. And now for the now record, well, actually, since, his he, was sitting, since he was sitting here, I didn't know. I, 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 I figured that rather than public comment, we'd invite you to join our conversation on the agenda here. Do you, do you still uh, retain the honorific of counselor? Right, thank you. Counselor Emeritus Paul Spector. Once a counselor, always a counselor. Yeah. Okay. You get thank the you tattoo. <laughs> Appreciate it. You're down south, they call you a colonel. What's that? If you're down something, it's like a colonel. So the, the minutes of our March 28th meeting were distributed. Um, does anybody have any questions about this? Or I, I move the approval of the minutes. To, there's been a motion to approve the minutes of March 28th. I'll second that. There's been a motion to second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we've approved our minutes. And item four on our agenda Petition to discontinue a portion of Home Street and the petition to accept a portion of Route 5, as I understand it, are both coming before the Public Works Commission this Wednesday. And uh, I think what we would want to do is wait until they have um, reviewed this and offered their comments before we take it up. Is that the procedure that we would normally handle? It, it, well, as you pointed out, there is not much normal left but there's um, the fact is, is that there, the commission is staying in existence uh, to address these agenda items these two agenda items after which they'll dissolve but so what we've been doing of late is to deferring to their expertise and input and I, I think that that would be a wise thing to do as far as uh, okay, thank you. the discussion so okay all right bye -bye. So do we just defer, or do we need a motion to that effect? Well, I move that um, that we postpone a, 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 a recommendation on this until uh, we we hear from uh, a report from the Public Works Commission. I'll second that. Uh, any discussion? I think so. In favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So that means we. Are at item number number five, and let me let me. And all, yeah, right. That was for that was for both items. By the way, that was for both items. Yeah, both the Elm Street discontinuance and the Pleasant Street acceptance. Um, so this this item that you put on the agenda is discussion regarding potential committee consolidation. The the, the, the background here is that um, with the. Uh, Board of Public Works no longer existing and with the Public Works Commission about to go out of existence. Uh, it occurred to me and, and others that this is sort of the last forum standing for, uh, uh, for discussion of public works and utility matters and that, that, that we, would, we might want to just talk among ourselves a little bit about what we see as the role of this of this committee going forward and that also led to conversation and I've had an opportunity to talk with the mayor a little bit about this too about well there 
there are folks in, in, in the city who have had a fair amount of experience on the Board of Public Works and have some combination of technical background and uh, institutional memory. Do we want to explore the possibility of bringing some of that background and know-how in some capacity to, to this committee? So for me, those are the those are the two questions. What 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 are what are the types of issues that we would imagine this committee dealing with going forward? And then secondly, do we want to think about in some fashion um, adding additional members in you know, a voting or non-voting or advisory or some capacity? So that that that's really the background as far as as far as I'm concerned, and I had a chance to seek a little background from, I, I was going to say former Council Inspector, but always Council Inspector is what you're talking about. Right, yep. Yeah. And uh, so he was kind enough to join us for the discussion. So I'll throw it, throw it out with uh, beyond the routine street closure sorts of things that would come before this committee, what are, what are we imagining as a committee we would find ourselves getting involved in. Well, I find it interesting that, you know, Public Works is essentially another city department. And the other city departments, with the exception of the school committee, really don't have committees that oversee them. I mean, it would be kind of unique. So I, I'd be I'm glad the mayor's here because I'd be interested, being that it's an administrative entity on his side of the fence, what does he see as our role? Be well, I'd like to add to that the fact is that the thing that makes this different insofar as that we approve rates that we don't do with other departments. So we have oversight over, as most recently, water and sewer rates, um, stormwater fees, and the like. And in that respect, those were the things that were principally be referred to this committee for discussion. And in this kind of nebulous stage, which I think is what we have to work out is about street petition stuff that's mm -hmm. kind of in limbo right now as to the process. And the, and the mayor probably want to join up. Yeah. You're the, you want to sit up with the grown-ups? No, it's fine. Uh, okay. but, I, but the imaginary fence is there. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, that's the kind of things I want to, you know, what's he going to send to us? What has to go through us as in, by necessity? And then see how much other stuff there is as to, you know, if that's all we're going to do, calling in the institutional knowledge that have already had two committees shot up from underneath them, they may not be interested. They may very well not. I don't think they would be unless there's something something media. And just, just for the record, I, I, I've never used the word oversight, and that, that, that's, that, that, that's certainly not what I would imagine this could be. It's more mm -hmm. if we should choose it to be. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the mayor does form, have to send them st some things to council, and maybe this is the venue which What's important, the reason you have committees is, is, is essentially to get more granular when you're discussing something, in particular when we're talking about rates and fees. And there might, you know, for instance, the stormwater conversation serves as a perfect example. Our limited knowledge, counselors, of what would be involved and what, you know, what the process is, is we try to establish a fee system and a, and a fee schedule. Um, it, the Public Works Commission was invaluable in that respect. And that they they gave us they they schooled us on it. Plus, they also, as you recall, led the whole discussion. This would be different. I mean, if something like that were to evolve again, it would go through this committee, and this committee would probably lead the public discussion in some respect. The mayor's the DPW would lead a conversation too. But on fee structure, ultimately, that's on us. And it, we need to and it would be nice to have the expertise. It's not necessarily of the current members of the, of the Public Works Commission. There's a whole spectrum of people who have a skill set that could be applied in this respect. We have established under our rules the ability to um, create mixed member bodies, which wasn't under our purview before. That was essentially a, a mayoral assignment Historically, the ex member bodies also included counselors. That's when things, before the new charter, when things were a little more confusing. Now we can create our own mixed member body as long as we're clear that the authority, it is only for purposes of informing or creating an expanded knowledge 
on an issue that we're, we're responsible for voting on. It, it does not give, as some people misconstrue some of these things, administrative authority directing the DPW to do something or directing uh, a committee, you know, what's historically happened is councilors will say, well, I have had a I've got a neighbor who's complaining about the stormwater outside his house and I'm going to tell the DPW to fix it here in this committee. That's not what it's going to be or shouldn't be. It can't be that's at least under the division of powers that's not our, that's not our realm. Well, let, 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 let's go back to the type of things the mayor would imagine bringing to this committee and start with. Start with, start with that if you want. So um, thank you for allowing me to participate. Um, I just I did want to just go back slightly because as I pointed out in my administrative order, um, the, uh, the elimination of the Public Works Commission, while it eliminates a sort of standing committee, to sort of, there's still several committees that are currently in existence that are providing advice on various issues to the Department of Public Works. Public Shade Tree Commission is a perfect example. Um, you could argue that the Transportation and Parking Commission, um, which includes the traffic engineer as the staff person, um, the DPW secretary or administrative staff is the clerical for the commission, and the director serves on it, and they're principally the people who have to carry out you know, 50 to 60 percent of the recommendations that are put forward by the commission. So it seems like that's an area um, like I don't, it would, would make a lot of sense to have the Public Works Commission that would be advising the DPW on traffic issues, for example, or on tree issues, for example. Um, they used to delegate somebody to serve on that commission, and they used to delegate somebody to serve on the tree committee. We've now sort of gotten rid of that overarching body. The other one would be the reuse committee, um, which helps which helps advise the DPW's um, solid waste coordinator, you know, recycling person coordinator. Um, advise them on those kinds of issues um, and actually we're we're holding off I'm, I held off in my administrative order on doing anything about the reuse committee um, because we want to sort of take a look at it and have the reuse committee look at whether they want to just keep that as the reuse again I can tomorrow get together five or six people and say could you just get together and give me some advice on an issue I'm allowed to do that I don't have to create I don't have to issue an administrative order. I don't have to make a formalized committee. I can just do that. Um, so at this point, we're going to leave the reuse committee alone. And just I want to explore there may be some other things. Because they don't only just do, do reuse. They also do recycling. They do a number of other things. And so before I create some new commission, I just want to make sure that the that we're looking at all the potential things. They can do a compost things, another big issue that they can work on. Um, so. So there's at least three or four areas, you know, energy and sustainability, there's a public works representation on that. Um, so I think there's still plenty of areas where there, um, you know, DPW is getting advice on very specific areas. Um, what they're not getting is the day-to-day, -day, you know, contracts and, and financial and all those kinds of things um, because we have a finance we have a financial team and a finance director and a procurement officer and, and we have a chain of command like we have with every other city department where that just doesn't make sense to have one department operating in one sphere and this one operating in another. Um, and I would also argue that the stormwater issue kind of came forward, was moving forward around the same time the charter change was kind of moving forward. Had that issue drop down out of the sky today, I, I would submit to you that there would have been a totally different path followed. Um, probably more more akin to the water and sewer rate, where we put together something and put it forward, and then that would begin the, the, the discussion and the debate. So so anyway, I, I, um, what I, I principally viewed this committee, first and foremost, is of course uh, reviewing rates. Um, the street discontinuance, um, we're going to be bringing forward a, a, an ordinance change on that one because, of course, state law, um, all state law requires, what state law requires is that there be a public hearing conducted by the planning board um, on a street continuance or a street addition. That's what is required. And then a vote of the city, then the approval of the city council and the mayor. We had created this whole other process um, where the Board of Public Works would have a hearing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and then the, public, and then the planning board would have a hearing, et cetera. 
Um, but now that the Board of Public Works has gone away, um, we're probably going to just revert to the state law. Now, that doesn't mean that if something got sent to you, the council, that you that the, this committee couldn't hold its own public hearing or do a site hearing or do whatever it wanted. Or do a joint hearing with the planning board. You could do that and too, possibly, if you wanted, kind of like ordinance committee does joint hearings on ordinances. So I mean, so I think that there's an easy answer to that issue. Um, again, we're looking at it through the lens of what used to happen based on how that system was created, but that's not actually what the state law requires, and it's not actually how it works in most other cities which don't have a board of public works. The planning board has a hearing, and that satisfies the state law requirement. And then the council's, it's the council's pleasure to do whatever they want um, to come up with a system. I could see us bringing forward um, potentially uh, new policies, uh, uh, you know, maybe related to green infrastructure. I mean, there's a lot of different possible ordinances or, or um, changes that might happen, and those would all be things that would come to you, potentially. I don't know. I mean, I, th I still think there's always going to be some ordinances which come to you, which will that come to the council, which will have some public works involvement in the public works sphere. Um, and you're always, you can bank on it once a year, there's going to be this whole issue of looking at the water and sewer rates. Um, those are the big ones that I can think of. Um, that doesn't mean there's going to be an increase every year, it, it, but, but um, and then again, and then there's all the other stuff that you may just want to, um, you know, the plastic bag ordinance, you could argue that that's a solid waste measure, or is it a board of health measure, or is it an environmental measure? I could have seen that coming to this committee, for example, um, something like that, because it had, you know, public work slash solid waste implications. So those are my random musings. Um, but I wholeheartedly endorse what the chair said about you know it not being an operational or oversight committee um, because I think we're trying to move away from that model um, so that the DPW has a clear understanding of who it works for, not that it might be working for City Hall, but maybe it's me working for some other appointed board and it doesn't quite know who it's working for. So, well, let, let, let me just add that, that I, I had a conversation last week with our new. DPW director, mm -hmm. just just to give her a heads up that we're going to have this conversation, and there I, I asked her, this is obviously not a, a body that has any business at all in your business mm -hmm. uh, in terms of oversight, but just in terms of a, 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 a case occasionally, maybe water and sewer rates as an example, to, to, yeah. to, 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 to bring an issue for purposes of just building support, mm -hmm. building a little bit of more more uh, awareness in the process of Actually, getting to a council vote, totally, and and you know that, that's that's more what I'm, the, the nature of it that I wanted to explore. With yeah. Whether there's some issues where we could just have an opportunity for a little more airing and makes so more sense. Did councilor Spectrum have something? Or something? Yeah. I mean, I was on that committee for the entire time I was here, and, and um, although I totally understood that the charter, we had to change the nature of that committee. It might have. It was my favorite committee because it seemed to be the, the we had the most um, agenda items every time. We often had the public show up to the meeting uh, on various issues, and we covered a lot of different territory. Now I understand it doesn't fit into the new model. Why would you have you know, just public works? I mean, I can give you theoretical reasons why. I mean, everybody uses public works all the time. You're driving on the road. You're doing public works. It's a very different structure than the police or fire departments, for example. Everybody's using it. it, it, it so it, the issues that come up affect a lot of people. And that's why that particular committee of all the ones that were on, people would just show up. They'd see the agenda and they would be showing up for the committee. It may have just been that the chemistry was just right, which is just, it could have been, maybe it would have been a terrible committee. I think that while I was on it, the chemistry of both the folks who came from the Board of Public Works and the fact that we had usually two or three members of the department there at every meeting made it just, uh, to me, a high-functioning committee. And the issues that came up there, again, I agree with you that it's like, well, we're changing the structure of that. There shouldn't be, we were never an oversight committee. But we, the issues that came up were almost anything that came up to the Board of Public Works might show, um, to the, in the department, might show up on the agenda. I think that some of the things that were really helpful 
on that committee, depending on what comes forward. If it's just going to be rates, I think on each, what, what I found is that when we switched in the last two years, we did not want to just ask members um, or people with expertise to show up at every meeting, so we would ask them to come to specific meetings. There was something that was very valuable for us when we had those members there at every meeting. It changed the nature of it for us. So when we had the director there, we had the engineer there, we would find that our conversations went much deeper. They also, when they were members of that committee, they were non-voting members, they would often be introducing items. So I have some nostalgia for the loss of what I consider to be one of the most effective committees, um, joint committees. Um, I understand that needs to change, but we never lacked for what came forward before that committee. Um, so we had things like Roberts Dam was before that committee. Uh, landfill issues were before that committee when it was a very hot issue. Um, that committee was even, you know, we would have discussions when the stormwater came about was, it was an effective committee, at least from my perspective, on discussions about how do we bring this forward to the public? And they were there, what, you know, what would be the best way to do that? Um, uh, so every issue seemed to, at some point, come up there. This, the whole streets issue actually emerged in that committee. Um, we pushed that because, and was stalled for a long time because one of the counselors absolutely refused and scared all the other counselors. When, once he died, we then, <laughs> people got a little more courageous Yes, yeah, so we had to kill them off. But that was, we wanted to deal with the streets issue many, many years ago and didn't want to do that. That's, that made, the main discussion on that happened in that committee. You know, the mayor actually called me and said, you know, you figure something out here. We put that off for a few years, but finally when it got going, the whole way it was done was discussed a lot in that committee of the actual process by which we would do the streets. And you had a lot of people from the public showing up at those meetings. Again. It's a changed environment. From my perspective, you know, it's, I think, again, it's gonna have to become much more. It's gonna have, I, I would like to see it have multiple members and operate more as a multi-member committee. But it doesn't make sense. What happened was, when the committee broke off and became the new structure, we actually found we were either because we didn't, we just, we never figured out exactly what we were doing. We had specific agenda items and then it was fine. But it was never kind of that, that packed meeting that, oh, we can't, we'll have to move this to the next meeting because we don't have enough, you know, time on this particular agenda. We were often searching for agenda items and actually canceled a few meetings. So maybe that was because we were sloppy, but we, we didn't know where we were going. So why isn't that dam taken down? <laughs> <laughs> why, was, why was the landfill such a you know horrendous issue? Uh, um, we could so spend a long time. I was just saying that, that yeah. you were definitely talking about these issues. It I, took, I would debate whether well, part of it was it, so. I think there was a, that's yeah. a great point because yeah. I think there was a big difference between how the issue of the landfill was handled and how the issue of say another big issue, which was stormwater. And I think they were night and day in terms of the reaction, and I think the difference was. We were trying, but did not, it, it, we were trying to um, educate, uh, help the Board of Public Works and the department become better at how they dealt with the political process, which I think we did the second time around. The first time around when that was happening, I was a, as well, we were kind of new kids, and we had a very, we had a different mayor we went to actually, the city council members went to the mayor a couple of times and said, this is turning out to be a disaster. And it was one of the main areas that I had, as I now have with you, it's around these two things. My biggest conflicts have been around. We went to, to uh, Mayor Higgins and said, this Board of Public Works and the department, we don't believe is handling this right vis-a-vis -vis the public. They're losing you know, kind of the, the message on this. So you're right, I think it turned out to be a mess. The next time around, when it came to the stormwater, I think we handled it well in terms of public. I, th and, I think the process. I, you touched on one of the things I think that this committee can do, which is education. And what yes. you're describing essentially is the ability to, um, because the public, 
cast around trying to find a place, a point of entity or some entity where, where things are discussed. And I think, unfortunately, it's usually been done in front of committees that uh, presumed an authority or was an authority was projected on them. And sometimes uh, the counselor to whom you referred, the late counselor, assumed a lot of authority that, that he did not possess. I think for the purposes of, of future things, let's say another landfill issue were to come up, that at least there's a forum here where it can be discussed as long as it's expressly noted that, that the, uh, the, old, the council can shut down the landfill by ordinance, but the fact is, is if there's any other process that has to do with the DPW, that we can hear the public's input and then at the same time share with what we know what the impacts would be and so on and so forth that this would be the this seems to me this would be the app venue for that and i yeah. i don't see i mean you know i also hear a wistfulness and i heard this from councillor adams as well a wistfulness from you both about the fact that yes you had a high functioning meeting with actual discussion and deliberation and then you guys were a committee in search of agenda items uh, you know, wandering aimlessly in the desert, hoping to find something to have value, and I think, unfortunately or fortunately, that that has changed. That is that has clearly changed with the, the sharper, defined uh, um, authorities. But I, I I think there's room here for us to do the political dimension that you described. That that was not the board of public work or the DPW's particular bailiwick, nor should have been. I think that's the mayor's argument. It's they. They're not a political entity. Yeah. They're not. They're, they should not be put in a position where they have to go and um, stump for something. Or uh, uh, that's that's on us if if that should be. Or it's on the mayor. And um, with that with the clear lines of demarcation, so they're not so blurry for the public, and not so blurry in our own minds. I, mean, I think that's the biggest problem. Is We've been for years. We've been sort of blurry about where our authority and responsibility lies. This committee, I think, has. That's not to say this committee would just be meeting twice a year to discuss rates. I think there, uh, as the mayor said, as as Paul has said, there there's any number of issues that would be relevant to to or at least be have this be the process. Because it's, it's two purposes. One pur main purpose is to inform the council, as I said, to become more granular for referral, to expand on discussions relevant to a vote when it comes to the floor. And then at the same time, it also serves as an opportunity for the public to share their notions and also to uh, understand or have explained to them what the, what, what the layout is under their consideration. And it's that second one that I think, you know, the first is sort of, you have to do that. But if it's that second one to provide a forum where there's an opportunity to build understanding and support. As, as, for example, it could it could could be water. So not that anybody's expecting anything dramatic this next time around. But if there comes a time when there needs to be yet again a change to methodology or a more dramatic change to rates, uh, a forum no, where I give away my new flat rate system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A forum where, a where, time where, to where, where it could be where it could be discussed. <laughs> And develop a little understanding and support along yeah. the way is what. Is yeah, my big issue is that, and I tend to, I very, I, I'm a former counselor, former council president. I understand the role, and I try, I try to be very liberal, and I, you know, and show as much, show great difference to the council. But what it can't be is like I want the director to come, and we play 20 questions, and she doesn't know what the questions are, or tell us everything that you're working on. That, that there needs to I be don't think some. Yeah. That's I'm not saying you're going to do that, but I'm just saying that it's that's also built into the rules. That's totally built into the rules. Yeah. I get it, but I'm just yeah. saying that's <laughs> kind of. Yeah, I just don't want that to happen either. Right. Nobody has um, any interest in that. Right? Got it. Yeah. We play of social services and that is a. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. A great committee. Yes. <laughs> but but <laughs> you know I I you know have you and others have to me on the the gas leaks conversation with mm -hmm. the gas, but there's obviously talk about a gas leaks ordinance coming along and if that has something to it then okay. presumably this is the so I, where that would can I, so what's what's helpful is uh, I often didn't understand which what expertise maybe this is one reason why I fell down when I was chair what expertise we would need on certain issues so when you said the gas ordinance I think 
well, maybe we should, who would we have there from Public Works to come? All of a sudden, I realized well, the old meeting, we'd have somebody who knew something about trees and somebody who knew something about roads and something, but I might not think of any of those things. So it was very helpful to have a broad spectrum of people there because often in Public Works, different issues would come up, especially when the public was there. And we were often, when the few times that happened in the committee, Councillor Adams and I were on, we'd be like, well, we'll get back to you on that. So it's, it, that's one reason to have more extended committee with more expertise. Again, if you if if those people are willing, if you can find those people who are willing to serve. But I would, I would think, you know, the mayor would be happy. You know, if we're dealing with some sort of action item that the council has to deal with that affects the department, the mayor would be more than happy to share somebody with technical expertise okay. to come and answer our questions. Yeah. You know, so I'm saying it's and, multiple, and people. they would have a vested Here's one of the interesting involvement things. in the outcome of our decisions. So they probably want to come and lay it one out. One of the things that happened in public works were, and partially we had board members there, we had an engineer there, we had Ned there. Often we had a streets person there. They would often say, actually Jim would say to Ned, actually that's not true. They they had different expertise around different issues. It was it was kind of interesting. It wasn't like, oh, the mayor might know, we'll have the director come. And then the director comes and says, well, actually, I need the engineer to answer that one again. It's hard to predict what those questions were on the issues we dealt with. It might be very different when you're very clear about what you're, we had a broader, whether, whether, whether it was a mandate or whatever it was, we took a very broad, View. We, we never actually, though, also saw that as somehow asking the director, tell us what you're doing. That never happened right. either in our group. But, but nonetheless, it, it sounds, for a lot of those issues that you're talking about are issues that just aren't going to be before this committee anymore because they're, they're purely uh, handled on and the And I'm saying I think, I think it would be, I just, I don't think we did a good job of finding ways to put those issues on the agenda. But I think they should still be put on the agenda. I think there are a lot of issues involving the Board of Public, people with the department that are not in any way you trying to have any oversight, but that are concerns. We just didn't, I don't think we did a great job or understood what we were doing. So I'm, I'm actually lobbying that it returns with a different, um, governmental structure, but if there's any way to return it, and again, this may just be the nostalgia about that particular chemistry of that group for many years. I think it was a very helpful committee that dealt with a lot of different issues. What I would, I sound like a therapist, what I hear you saying. Yes, go ahead. Is, uh, I'm going to lie down. <laughs> no, I mean, what I hear you say. Or just but education. I, but I, I, I think, you know, it wouldn't be exclusive to the any department, but the fact is, there's a point, there's a gap where the public, and by extension us, the representatives of the public, have an ability to somehow uh, be party to the discussion and understanding of any particular policy issue. Um, that they're, 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 and what you enjoyed about that committee was that it was there, that was yeah. manifested. It doesn't, but it, you know, as you said, there's no. We don't have a police committee anymore. But, uh, we have public safety, or, or now it's not even that. And now, but the yeah, but it went from being back in the day when I was first on it, the police committee, which confused itself with being a police commission at times, uh, felt they had authority and oversight over uh, directing the police department and how to function and behave. Um, and that was a disservice to the public because it projected something in authority that we didn't have. And at the same time, it also created a lot of difficulty with the department as they tried to work with that. But there, were, I were think it's just- I don't understand. Was that committee, who were the voting members on that committee? They're all councilors. See, ours had voting members that were councilors. Councilors and the, and yeah. No, no, yours was unique in that it was originally started as a liaison committee. Yeah, similar to what the school committee was. It was a liaison committee, where yeah. basically everyone can kibitz about issues that have, have uh, you know, they, they, as you pointed out, come up on the agenda frequently with the council. So, I mean, we're still casting around trying to find the best fit and the best way that we can function that provides, I mean, I think we have greater transparency now and clearer lines of authority and or influence. 
but at the same time, there still is the concern about the disconnect because everyone defaults to the way it used to happen, the way it used to be, which was the comfortable way, but wasn't necessarily the most effective way and also not the most legal way. Yes, I just want to add one other thing. And, uh, when you were saying how it might be good to have people with you know, past experience on the UW or past experience or whatever, I think that's all great. And there might be people in the community that have specific experience. Um, but that doesn't mean you have to make them a member of the committee. Right. You, you can, can certainly, them. like most like congressional committees or state, you know, call those people forward. You call, you know, the administration comes forward and puts together, puts forth its information. Nothing precludes you from saying, well, actually, we'd like to call in some outside people and ask them for their opinion on this. You know, so there wouldn't. I just would. I just would be worried about um, deputizing. You know, three or four or five citizens to be on a standing committee um, if there's not like a specific set of tasks that are going to be happening every month. Well, I think that wouldn't be fair to them. Yeah. Well, I, 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 let, let me just say that I, I'm beginning to have a little bit of that, not, not concern, but I mean, I'm, 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 I'm not sure that we have a clear enough sense of the issues that really are predictably coming for this committee to go out and write job descriptions for two or three experts to bring along the committee in whatever capacity when we do have the option at any time on an ad hoc basis. The next time a landfill project is coming along or, or whatever, we've got the ability to, you know, to put together a- We're building a board too, did I mention that? So. <laughs> <laughs> and I can think of- Strong support. I can think of a couple spots I'd recommend. Mass Street. But but you know we've all, we always and then, and, then, and then no no seriously and then, and then we put together the, the 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 folks uniquely qualified for that issue as opposed to them just sort of hanging around on yeah, a committee I, waiting for an issue that they're going to have expertise on. So I do completely agree with that. But there is a committee, and it's different because it's very specific, which is the Energy Commission. Yeah, which, which is a mayoral is committee. A mayoral yeah. committee, which that's another option because I mean I served on that committee. And it had all kinds of input, and I think it's a pretty effective committee. I think it's a different discussion when someone's sitting there. I know that it took me a while to get comfortable on the committee. I thought all these people were incredibly brilliant on every topic, and I learned that they didn't know all that much more than I knew. It's a different thing, and I think that's a fairly uh, productive. Well, let's see. The Energy Committee commission. reports to the mayor. Right. And so, so isn't and it, that another option? That but the, the fact is that the mayor has different authorities. So we our committees report to us. So right. But an option would be to have a similar to change. I'm just saying I'm not I'm not necessarily even advocating yeah. for that. But it is one option because that's a there are some ways in which the Energy Commission operates in the, the, the tone and texture of the conversation and the size of the group, and the, the way people come in, operates in a similar fashion. The, the kind of chemistry of that group, the way it discusses issues, is similar to the way the old. When we have, as an example, and, and I've sentenced Dennis to this committee, uh, a, 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 an ad hoc committee that's um, currently reviewing the uh, economies of the downtowns of Florence and, and Northampton. It's an ad hoc committee, it's, it's, it's an investigative committee with an express set of goals that sometimes get hijacked or... Well, it's a study request of an existing committee. Exactly. But it is an existing committee, but it's also, it could have just as easily been an ad hoc committee. It could have just as easily been a committee comprised of other people, but um, I was pretty confident that the, the, the counselors who were uh, in that committee were, were up to the task. But that's essentially to have a dedicated conversation about a specific item or you know or a broader item to allow us to educate the council and also if if it makes sense to generate law if it if it makes sense. So the difference is like energy commission again. I'm not saying this is how it is. I'm just bringing up another model. Chris Mason and his position obviously right. is very different, but. He comes to that committee. It's not that there's he's asking for. Well, you know, I'd like some oversight. I'd like you to evaluate my work. But he comes and he says, "So, what do you guys think of X, Y, and Z?" I think that's what happened often when we had the joint committee. It's not that Ned would come and say, you know, he'd say, "So, you know, I have some things I'd like to talk about." He also it, it allowed him. It was a different role. It allowed him to get input from us. 
we, we had no authority. We couldn't, you know, it was the mayor's authority. But he had a group of people where Jim Lorelei came to us to discuss various things. Um, so it was a two. It was two ways. It operated more like Chris operates with our. Well, Chris, it's very Chris, different. It's a very different structure. So but Chris, Chris comes with his me. charges. Yeah. Yes. With the mayor's charge. Yeah. But I'm saying that would be a different structure. It would be yeah. not a council. I would also say that you know, well, energy and sustainability was totally based on transportation and parking. I mean, it's like almost to a person modeled exactly like it. And it's those are, but those are looking They're at very issues specific. that cross different departmental lines. Yeah. Like, because again, before Transportation and Parking Commission, you had the Police Commission putting up stop signs, you had the Planning Department doing something else related to traffic, and then you had the DPW doing something totally different related to traffic. Yeah. So it was all put together. The same thing with energy and sustainability. We realized that you know city buildings are one of our biggest energy users in the city, so we need to have central services on there, public works, and you know all the other issues related to that. That's why they're on there. The energy. Uh, officer planning and sustainability. Yeah. So, I mean, I just see those as larger policy commissions, including some areas like, I mean, the trucks on Lincoln Avenue, you wouldn't send to a public works commission because it includes police enforcement, it includes land use, it includes larger, so that's why it's better suited to the transit. So anyway, I, I just... I mean, I, the difference yeah, between I'm, policy development, yeah. that's what the mayor's office does, and ordinance development, yeah, which is what we have, and and I think so. With those two principal differences, the mayor charges Chris Mason with, you know, let's investigate this and right. this for, for developing policy, and then we advise his policy members, uh, of, you know, and we serve advising consent. The, it's different here because we aren't making policy, we aren't crafting policy, we aren't crafting departmental policy, which unfortunately I think has been. The predicate. This is the way people have proceeded in the past, and uh, the property committee used to basically have more power than any other than, than the mayor in this town. That they would make policy relative to property issues. Um, they would make policy, and the police committee made policy. This, this committee or public? Well, the various council committees made policy, that, and that was before my time. Yeah, yeah, it was, and, and you were, you and I, and all of us were in the morphing period. When, when, and then fortunately with the charter review, um, we, we, you know, we dusted up the old charter and, and looked and saw that we were in violation of many things, including Massachusetts general law, how we, how we function, because it's the way we, we were, it's the way we always did it. And we, and there's still, there's still um, some arcane items that we still abide by that will be addressed in time. But in this case now, the delineation is far clearer, and I know this created some frustration for some people. Some resign when they're frustrated, but the the uh, the, the policy differences and the ordinances differences and the charges of each of each body the, those yeah. are becoming brighter and clearer. About and I and I think that's ultimately benefits the public. The one thing that I agree with you is that there is still this portion. Where the public doesn't have access, or, or not not because anyone's obfuscating, it's because essentially systemically there's not particularly the best form. That that's what I think we can develop here: a better forum for uh, um, give and take from the. Yeah, and one of the things that the other thing I remember happened in that committee was the public would show we had a public comment period. Right. And so, like in the city council, people would come up with all kinds of issues because the department deals with all kinds of issues. Right. So potholes on my street or right. the truck ran over. And it would be a place where it wouldn't just be the council members there, it would also be there were members of the DPW there. So it did give people that form, which um, at times I wish they didn't have that. But I think it's not the kind of thing that I've seen. Occasionally we see that coming to the council in a public meeting about a very specific issue uh, related to, say, the Department of Public Works or my street or my telephone pole. Listen to my office answering issues. Right. Nearly every Yeah, but, right. so, so but you know what they would do? You know what Claire would do? Claire would say, this person's, I would get a, an email. She said, so-and-so called, or Lynn, so-and-so called our office about the mailbox being crashed into for the fifth time, and we suggested they show up at your meeting that you're chairing next week, so they're going to, 
So it's an operational it's issue. But yeah. why did you want that? Yeah, it's not. I'm, yeah. well, I'm not, I'm not I'm saying I mean, it might have made for an interesting meeting, but. I'm just saying it gave the public a place, like Bill was saying. Wait, I, I'm not saying you want it. I'm just sharing with you. I'm not saying you should. No, I, I agree with it. But that. it gave I, the public a place. I tell the the more than any other committee, people yeah. showed up at that committee. When you say, it's is there any public comment? How often in your other committees do you have anybody showing up just to give public comment? And that isn't specifically related to your agenda. show up for the budget hearing. That's but right. that's to the budget. I'm saying when they just well, show up to the meeting, like they do at council meeting, and someone stands up and you say, whoa, what are they going to talk about now? It was an interesting, I'm not saying you No, no, what you're, I, what you're asking. I didn't like it. I, I you know, no, it the, took the, a lot of time. The, actually, the thing that you're speaking about actually does have some validity. It's essentially the complaint window for uh, an opportunity for people to feel that they they can tell us that we're fools and morons and they're going to vote us out of office. We just had it at the council meeting, and that we're insensitive boards. And that actually has a value. That has a value. It's it's hard to build into the structure to create it as a, as such because I think the mayor's preference is we want to deal with these things in a pragmatic yep. way. Step back and say we're not going to go to the squeakiest wheel. We've done squeaky wheel. We want to we want to do this in a, a systematic way that makes sense and and saves us money as opposed to being a reactive force, be a, a, a proactive force. The council's job, I always said, is to be a firewall. Our job is to get flamed with frustration, and uh, there are some councilors who fan those flames and like to use it for, to their advantage, and then there are other councilors who actually understand and then try and lay back what, but actually just being heard, just being. I mean, the opportunity to yell at an idiot like me is the most satisfying thing a person can get. I got it. Yes, well, <laughs> let's see. But it, it, and so I think that I think that's the structural part that that I, at least I sense is is missing in the, in this, um, and it has value. It, I think it does have value. It doesn't affect policy. It doesn't affect law. Theoretically, it shouldn't. It shouldn't. It should, we shouldn't be crafting law based on squeaky wheel responses. Nor should we do that with policies. But at the same time, the public has to have an opportunity to speak truth to power, as it were. And calling and yelling in the mayor's answering machine is not as satisfactory as coming and standing and boldly, uh, you know, reading something you wrote overnight to yell at the counselors that you know that you know all of some citizens. That that has value. That is value, and I don't know. And I, I don't want to say we would build a committee expressly for that purpose. But I think embedded in each committee is the opportunity for that. Well, I mean, certainly in in, in in the way that we describe in our agendas the public comment period, and the way that we we we, may, we can do more to go out of our way to invite. But there's only so much you can do to get folks to. You no, 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 I, window if you yeah. set it no, 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 I, I, I wouldn't invite it. I think it's just to have the opportunity. It's not necessarily you would advertise. So, so the question is, beyond an advertised public comment period, what else do we do to? No, I think well, what I was saying was the education dimension. For instance, what issues of rates come up and or rate structure? Um, we're more an educational forum at that point, or we're even debating, you know, how do we structure? How are we going to structure this fee schedule? Are we going to do a flat rate, or are we going to do? Uh, the mayor has made a presentation on on a graduated rate that that applies to uh, a, a greater onus on the larger consumers. And users. This would be the forum that you would have that those hearings and those discussions. And I think, or should we close the landfill or not? Um, I, I wish this committee had existed actually when we. Because before we did the rate study, we also brought forward the big master plan, the capital plans, um, and actually the Public Works Commission held a hearing on them at JFK, in which I think like Fred Zidnock was like right. the only person who you know, right. two people showed up, um, and that I, I would hope that the council could give it more heft and say, you know, these are major right. capital projects that we want to have a review of. The the, um, the stormwater rate yeah. process. Absent the uh, board of public works, this would have been this would have been the yeah. venue. This would have been the committee that would have, and that's a that's a heavy load. That was a heavy load to lift. But and that's still, and, you know, and that's when you you in that respect that we defer to what you were suggesting, which is to seek out people like Carrie Culhane or um, uh, 
So in this case, we see hired experts to come in right. from the outside and look at 10 or 20 years um, and put together this report. And then we were trying to present that Share in a way that, that the public would understand that we had done that and that here was this roadmap of projects we needed to work on. And, uh, but I just don't think it captured the imagination of the public. And I think you know the Public Works Commission having a meeting about it just didn't capture people's right. You know, just no. like when the, you know, sort of just like when, oddly, when the Board of Health had a hearing about the landfill expansion, nobody came. And, right. And the you know, the right. Board of Health Works had hearings on it, nobody came. Um, it's going to require some work on all of our part to, you know, to kind of get the word out that this is important stuff. And so, but at least there'd be a record of it on a video that somebody could watch as well, a, a fact. I, mean, that's, well. I, I think that's yeah. another connection that we're working with that is improving and we will I, I think that counts as much too I think is uh, so I think there actually will be lots of issues I just can't I can't pr give you a prediction of what they will all be because who knows what it could be we could have some issues with none of us even thought of that'll happen which is why it's hard for me to tell you you should have this person that person this person suddenly join your committee right um, it may just be on specific issues if you're going to have a hearing about a specific issue, then maybe you want to have person X come and offer testimony or whatever. Well, that, I mean, that, that's what I'm taking. Yeah. Well, it, it was, one, of, one of the things that we come up short, though, is that it's a lot easier for you to hire um, consultants. We wouldn't go so far as hiring consultants. We don't have the budget for that. So we actually have, have to, to come to you, though. I mean, usually to approve that, I come yeah. to you and say, the city is doing a study. Well, if we... If we you know, if we were to, I mean, to solicit citizens to donate their time to come speak and to or to participate in um, an analysis, what with, with stormwater there was a public, there was a citizen committee right. essentially that was established. It had, yes, it had, it had its ups and its downs, but ultimately a policy came out that um, that could use some tinkering, but was actually pretty decent. The process was kind of brutal at times. But, but 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 it had a fair amount of buy-in by the time. Yes, and public participation had a lot of public it, participation. It, the the um, it was good. It, it was it, it went pretty well. Um, so so I'm 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 not hearing a compelling reason to permanently to look at adding some permanent members to the committee, whether we call them voting, non-voting adjuncts, whatever. But to, to think in terms of. As issues come along, just either one the right expertise yeah. to come to the committee meetings, or there might be instances where we set up an ad hoc yeah. study group. Um, and, and situation by situation, we figure out how, in some cases, we might work with or might invite the participation of mayor staff or not. But that uh, no, no sort of permanent change to the makeup of the committee, at least that's what I'm so far taking away from this. Councilor Murphy, have any thoughts to the contrary? Um, we have our basic functions, our rate setting, and perhaps street closures, and anything else that comes along that the council sends to us. So I think we've got our core people. And then if the council sends us something we need special expertise for, we can invite those people to come and join us for the purposes of that discussion and making that recommendation. But I certainly don't see the need to tie them down and rate regularly showing up. To the committee when we're doing something that really doesn't need their expertise, just being respectful of their time. Oh, I mean, they'd be happy when they're coming. They do something, and then if there's nothing to do, they don't have to come in. So I'm very comfortable with that. And at the same time, I think there's more that we can all do to, to just uh, bring more attention to the to the issues that are coming before the committee and try to get more folks engaged and showing up and let hopefully this committee become known over time as mm -hmm. a little bit more of a of a place including our place window to, to I gotta go. Waving? That's it. Light up well, certainly like, but, but we haven't officially adjourned, Council. Yeah. Yeah. Stop back again anytime. Pam, it's been great seeing you again. <laughs> oh snap. <laughs> 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 Did he always leave when he didn't win an argument? Yeah, it's pretty much yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, no, it's no, no, fine. I, I just, um, no, I think it's, it's fine. Yeah, it's, it, it, why, why create 
the frustration that already exists with the standing members of the commission that they they're not feeling particularly useful and why re establish something like that in this committee invite them for a task complete the task put them be on their way till the next time that seems yeah. to be consensus there does seem to be consensus on that and so maybe it wasn't a necessary conversation but for me it was helpful just just no. just to kind of put it out there and look at it from some no, I think that's point actually, of view. I think it was a critical conversation. No, I don't know. I don't I, I think we were adrift into the <laughs> no, but, no but what? But it, no, it actually it also helps us clarify what our our mission is with this committee as well. I think so. And I, that, that, I, that's I, no I think he's in fact I didn't see this discussion of the former chair, and I commend the current chair for his, mm -hmm. his leadership in this. So, <laughs> that's well, the, the, the first time I chair any committee, you can count on me. Okay. <laughs> saying, what? Are, wh why are we here, and what are we well, doing? You know, the hey, Admiral Stockdale. The Admiral Stockdale question. <laughs> Who am I? Exactly. What am I doing Except here? Admiral Stockdale. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, 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 so do we consider that we 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 we, we have adequate consensus on this for now that I think we without a vote yes we did a good job on that item number five <laughs> okay uh, is there any other new business before the committee or did the mayor have anything else no I, I didn't see the agenda so I didn't know if there was another item or not that was it, it. But I think thank you very much thank, thank, you. I thank um, you for inviting me and again I, I know that will any information you want or people you want as long as we get enough in the morning we'll get them to you and provide whatever information, um, whatever the issue. So, thank you. Okay. 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 Thank uh, you. I'd like to move on item six. Um, Please do. I, I move that we adjourn. Is there a second? I'm happy to second that. All in favor? Aye. Then we are. We thank you very much. We stand adjourned.